all are good afternoon, kids. And like to say thank you for coming and for joining with me today. And, you know, we, we already talked about this topic, the air last time, but I want you to, um, we, we, will, we will talk it again for the second time because last time we are not done with it. So today we will be talking for the first section, for the first part, we will be talking about the air. We know that I told you already last time that the air is very important to each one of us because we need it. And I told you also that we cannot see the air, the presence of the air, but we can see, we can feel the air uh, coming through us. Like for example, here's the fan, look at the fan. Can you see that? Oh, I, I think you can't see. Right, can you see the fan? Yeah, there. The, the fan is moving and producing and producing air. Air so that I can feel, be comfortable here while teaching in front of you. So air is very important. So this is the question here that we have to answer already done. And there you go. Everywhere we can find air around us. So our, our earth is surrounded by a layer of air. This layer of air known, known this one, this is, this is known. This is, uh, the word is known. This layer of the earth known as atmosphere. So atmosphere, you can find this air only on the layer of the earth or the outside layer of the earth. So it really protects us later, I will show you. Okay, air is the mixture of different gases. What are those gases? We have the nitrogen, the oxygen, the carbon dioxide, and noble gases that you can see in our surroundings. You can see in our surroundings. Air has also other components such as water, vapor, dusts, and microorganisms. I told you already this one last meeting. So this is only a sort of a, a review for our previous topic. So what, what about composition? The composition of air, we can see that the largest of all is the nitrogen. So what is the composition of, or how many percent of the nitrogen that you can see? There are 78%. So there is 78% composition. What about a component, I mean? And then 21% only the oxygen and only 1% which is carbon dioxide. So as you can see with your eyes, nitrogen is 78% while oxygen is only 21%. But let's discover the nitrogen is the largest component of the air. This is unreactive. And it's used to make fertilizers and explosives. See, I, I told you already that one. Remember, kids, I told you last meeting that oxygen is the most important for all for, for important, important gas to all living organisms or living things. See, living things um, need or oxygen in order for them to survive, in order for us to survive. Without oxygen, we cannot survive. All of us will die. Okay, let's proceed. I think we end here. So let's proceed to the next one here. All right, so I think this is the last one here. And carbon dioxide, so we already talked about oxygen. We already talked about um, the oxygen. And now we are going to talk about carbon dioxide. So what is what is the importance of carbon dioxide to us? No. Generally speaking, carbon dioxide, we don't need it. We don't need carbon dioxide in order for us to live. We need carbon dioxide. But the plants need carbon dioxide in order for them to survive and make their own food. See, the plants can make their own food in the process called photosynthesis for them to survive. See, as you can see, the carbon dioxide there is, is flying on the air, in the air, so uh, on the air, I mean, and this kind of smoke, 
or shall we say carbon dioxide, we don't need this one, but the plants need it very, really, very, very badly. They, the plant needs it so much in order for them to make food and they will grow um, strongly and healthily. And right after that one, after the plants can make their own food, of course, the plants will grow but healthily and there is some living organisms dependent on them. I will tell you later on. Okay, another kind of gases, we have the noble gases. This is made up of few types of gases such as helium, the neon, and argon. So the neon, I mean, the helium is used for balloons. See, this kind of balloons, I mean, gas are very light that it makes the balloon, sorry, float on the air. See, you can appreciate this one because of the helium. You can appreciate, oh, the balloon is flying because of the gas. And what is that gas? Helium. Another one here, we have the neon. Neon is usually used for advertising signs. Like signs, for example, I can see this one. They're advertising. And also the last but not the least, we have the argon that can be seen in the light bulb. All right, so here, based on your observation, another type of air again, the water vapor is also present in the air. So remember kids, water vapor is also present in the air. Present, okay, remember, also present in the air. Do you notice the water droplets that form in the outer part of a glass of iced water that is left on a table? See, at first, that's only a water vapor in a form of a gas. But later on, as they grow, as they grow up there, uh, as they um, getting cooler and cooler and cooler, what will happen? They will what? They will form into a droplets. That is why you can see water, even though you are not getting the glass and pour the water on the table. You are not doing it, but you can see the droplets of water. What's the reason? Because of the water vapor. Okay, because of the coolness of the area. The water droplets come from the water vapor in the air. Okay, remember? In the air. Next, the water vapor is cooled by the glass of iced water and turn in turns into water droplets. So there's a turning point of that water vapor from gas to hard droplets of water. See, look at that. No one is putting, no one is, you know, pouring the water on the table, but you can see the, the moist from the glass. And of course that moist from the glass will fall down to the table. Right, so another thing that we have to be very careful, we have to take care of ourselves. There are other things in the air such as microorganisms and dust. What do you mean by microorganisms? From the word micro means tiny very little living organisms or living things that um, can, that the air is carrying towards us and the dusts. And remember, dusts and some microorganisms such as bacteria. Yes, bacteria is a kind of the living organisms that we don't need it. Bacteria can make us sick, see? That is why the reason on the picture, as you can see, they are washing their hands with soap. Why? Because our body, if we will go outside, we will be exposed by those microorganisms. The reason before we eat, we have to wash our hands with soap in order, in order, I mean, in order that the microorganisms 
such as bacteria and dust will not remain in our hands and we, it, we, we will not take in, we will not eat that microorganisms, which we don't need it to wash it. Another thing, these things can stick to our body easily, okay? Therefore, we should keep ourselves clean by bathing or washing our hands with soap. So that's the very important thing that we have to remember as we look. I will... All right, so chapter eight, the same, but this one, we will be talking about the importance of the, the air. So what are the importance of the air? Now I will show you the video shows that, see that in, you know, on that certain presentation kids, we can see and we witness the different uses and importance of the air to us. Number one, you cannot fly a kite without the wind. You cannot play outside if there is no air because it's too hot. So the air is very important to each one of us. So not only, not only to us as human beings, but all living things, including plants and animals, need air to breathe. That's the number one, the, the number one thing that the air we need it. We need we need it every single time. They need oxygen to produce energy from the food they get to carry out their body, their daily activities. So I need, you need, animals need, and plants also need this kind of air in order for us to do our daily activities. Without air, we cannot hear any sounds. What? Are you telling me that it's, I cannot hear someone talking if there is no air? Yes, exactly. This is because sound, needs to travel. Yes, the sound needs to travel. Some musical instruments make use of the vibration of air to produce music. Like for example, this one, the girl or the woman or the lady is playing a flute. And this flute produce sound from the vibrating column of, column of, air in it. So that means this certain material, this certain object or instrument, let's say, let's say sound is produced from the flute by the vibrating column of air in it. So the girl is playing like, ooh, like that. And then this object will produce sound because of the effort of the girl by blowing, blowing, or putting some air on that certain object. Another thing, look, the atmosphere around our earth protects us from the harmful rays of the sun. See, as you can see the, the, the sun, as we talk, um, as we talked this one, the sun is exactly very hot in general, very hot in general. This is very dangerous if there is no atmosphere that blocking the direct heat from the sun. Why, what would be, the, what will happen if we, will, if we don't have atmosphere? Besides that, the atmosphere helps to maintain the temperature of our earth. Yes, the atmosphere. The reason why in the evening, it's not that cold. In the morning or during the daytime, it's not that hot because of the atmosphere. Otherwise, it will be either too hot during the day or too cold during the night if there is no atmosphere who blocks the absorption of the direct heat from the sun going to the earth. So it is because of the atmosphere, we can feel the very what? Um, we can feel the, how do you call this one? The normal temperature on our earth. Another thing that we have to know, if there is no carbon dioxide, not only plants cannot make food and survive. Why? 
you said a while ago, teacher, that only plants need carbon dioxide. We don't need carbon dioxide. That is true. But plants cannot make food. Uh, cannot make food. And of course, and survive. Other living things depending on plants for food. And what, uh, what are those plants? What are those um, living organisms or living things? I, human being, we depend on, on plants because we have the rice. The rice is from the plant. If there is no carbon dioxide, the rice cannot make its own food. And of course, the plant will, survive, will not survive. See, also, if we don't have that, like fruits and vegetables, I know that you like to eat vegetables and fruits. Fruits and vegetables cannot make, cannot make their own food if they don't get carbon dioxide. So the reason why, if there is no carbon dioxide, animals and people will be affected like this cow. This is only an example. If there is no grass anymore, which is the cow likes to eat it. If there is no grass, what will happen to the cow? It will become thinner and thinner and they will become sicky and later on they will die because of the shortage of food. The shortage of food can make animals and us to what to lose our weight and later on we will die. So not only that kids, plants need carbon dioxide to make what? To make food in the process called photosynthesis. Look at the cow. Because of the carbon dioxide, the plants make their own food and the plants are so strong and healthy. This cow is eating now and the cow is what? Growing healthy as well. So how will this affect? How can be affected? How will this cow be affected if there is no carbon dioxide on the air? In the air, of course, this cow will die. Next, some toys need air to work. See, there are some toys that need air to work as well. Beach ball, balloons, and floats need air. Example, are they? Oh, what do you think? They will enjoy without the air inside of this beach ball? Of course not. Can you see the beauty of these balloons if there is no air inside? Cannot. Are you? Will you enjoy to play any float if there is no air inside? Will these toys be fun to play if they are deflated? No, the answer is no. So air is very important to each one of us, not only to the animals, but also to the plants. All right, kids, I hope that you learned something about our topic for today, importance of the plants into all the living things, into all the living organisms. What are going to do? Appreciate the beauty of our surroundings. Thank you so much for coming for today. And I hope that you learned something with this very informative topic. topic. And I'd like to tell you, there will be no homework to do because your book has no activity. You'll be happy for it. So maybe next time I will tell you to answer your book, but this time has no uh, worksheet or work to do. So all you have to do is study this topic and goodbye to all of you and have a good day. Thank you.